Okay, module 1.5, system software and computer management. This is grade 12 notes, but obviously these kind of topics we have covered in grade 10 and grade 11, we're just building on in our knowledge. The five sections that we're gonna be covering, operating systems, utility software, security tools, factors influencing performance, and troubleshooting using utility software. In section one, operating systems, we're going to be looking at the role of the operating system, the task manager, and single user versus multi-user operating system. If we think back to grade 10, when we looked at what system software is, it's software that is intended to control, support, or operate a computer. There's sort of three main categories for your system software. There's the operating system, there's utility software, and then drivers. For operating systems, you're going to, depending on what type of computer you have or computing device you have, will determine what kind of operating system you have. Um, the most common ones would be if you have an Apple device, you would, if it's a laptop or desktop for Apple, you would have Mac OS and Big Sur is their um, latest edition um, or version of their OS. Um, if you had an iPhone, you'd have iOS. Um, if you had an Android uh, device, you would have possibly Android 10 or 11, though you could have an older device where you could have Nougat or Oreo, uh, Lollipop, KitKat. Um, they use Sweet Treats as their sort of original um, names, but the more current devices is probably Android 10 or 11. Um, if you've got a Windows computer, you possibly have Windows 8 or Windows 10. And just a reminder that uh, Huawei devices, um, have moved away from using Android uh, tools, Google services. And so if you have an old Huawei, like a P30, P40 Lite, um, you could possibly still have access to Google tools, but the newer devices um, do not come with those kind of tools. Uh, utility software. So whether that's antivirus software, um, some kind of backup system, uh, file compression software, uh, disk defrag, all these kind of things that are going to help you um, get good um, performance or uh, ensure your computer continues to operate at a satisfactory level. Um, drivers, um, whenever you plug some kind of hardware, whether it's a printer, a scanner, a controller um, to game with, um, flash drive, mouse, keyboard, um, you plug these things into your computer and your computer has to be able to communicate with them. Uh, think of them as speaking a foreign language and the computer needs to understand what language they're speaking. So a driver is software that um, generally your operating system is able to detect which driver, which software driver your device needs, and it will automatically install it for you. But sometimes, um, particularly if you've got something that's a little bit older or it's not kind of a mainstream a device, you would have to go to the uh, website of the company that you bought the thing from and you'd have to download the driver there. So the operating system is system software that controls all the activities taking place in the computer. Um, it's sometimes referred to as a software platform as it controls and supports all other software and hardware in the computer. When the computer is switched on, the operating system must first be loaded to control all these activities. So what happens when your computer is switched on? You're pushing the power button. What is happening? Computers are made to follow instructions. When a computer is switched on, it searches for those instructions that it's going to follow. These instructions are stored on special memory chips called ROM, read-only memory. And these chips are able to keep the instructions even when the computer is switched off. So they're not volatile like your RAM, where the contents are erased when the power is switched off. ROM keeps their instructions. So when you switch on the computer, these instructions stored on the ROM do the following. They'll perform some kind of basic hardware test. Now, in the past, when computers were really slow, you could actually see those hardware tests kind of loading, and you could check that they were checking that things were working. But um, nowadays, it's so fast, you don't even realize that it's happening. It'll find and load the operating system. So if all the basic hardware tests saying everything's good, it will find and load the operating system straight away. Once the operating system is found, it's loaded into memory and control of the computer is handed over to the operating system. If it doesn't, you'll get a screen telling you um, some things that you need to do. 
the process of loading a computer is called booting. Remember, we learned about cold boot and uh, warm boot last year. So if you start your computer from scratch, you're just booting it up. It's cold boot. The computer's cold, hasn't gotten hot yet. But if you've been using your computer for a while and you need to um, restart it, that would be a warm boot. Smart devices also have operating systems, which would include iOS, Android, and Harmony. Harmony is the Huawei OS. Um, another type of operating system that you could get on um, some tablets and laptops is the Chrome operating system, and that would be on Chromebooks or Chrome tablets. Um, and they only run the Google sort of programs, um, but they're not as popular as um, Apple, um, Microsoft, and then obviously, um, even though Chrome OS works with Android, um, Android is obviously far more popular for phones and things like that. And Chrome only works on the tablets and the uh, laptops. The role of the operating system, so the functions, they provide the user with an interface. And we learned in grade 10, Windows 10 uses the graphical user interface. They manage the programs on the computer. They manage the hardware, making sure that it works properly. And they provide basic security. So operating systems allow us to interact with the computer via the graphical user interface. This interface is graphically presented by using small pictures called icons and other visual aids. That would include menus, buttons, uh, tiles, which make it easier for us to understand and use the computer. When I was young, um, you used to have to, have to type in different things on a black screen um, to get programs to load. And now you're able to um, use your mouse and you can double click on something and it will open a program for you. It's a lot easier for people to understand how to use the computer and you're able to learn a lot quicker. Operating system allows the user to choose and run software by loading programs into memory and coordinating the processing of these programs with the central processing unit. So we've got disk management when we're managing our hardware, memory management, and input-output management. Disk management. The operating system manages how the data is organized on the storage device and how and when the programs access the storage device. And if you're thinking of a desktop or laptop computer, you're probably working with a hard drive, a hard disk drive, HDD, or a solid state drive, SDD. S SD, sorry. Memory management. Memory, RAM, that's our primary memory, is managed to control how programs use it. Input-output management. The operating system manages the input and output of the computer and how programs use the input and output devices. So if I plug my controller into my laptop and I want to use it in a game, the operating system is going to help me to do that. Though sometimes I do have to download um, extra software to make that happen. Providing basic security. The operating system provides basic security functions such as user and access control. So using passwords, using fingerprints to scan to get onto a device. It can also provide basic protection against threats to our computers, but these are often best handled by other utility programs. So with Windows 10, you get access to some free software that will manage your computer and it's probably good and it will probably do enough. But if you're someone that is um, doing a lot of things online and you're worried about security, you can always buy programs that are giving a little bit more um, better protection to your device. The task manager, it's most commonly used to end non-responsive programs. Your computer's frozen, you can't get the program to close. So you'd go to your uh, task manager and you would click on the program and you would end that task. To get to the task manager, you're gonna go control delete. You're gonna click on task manager and other uses provides information about the computer's performance, but um, we only look at the task manager in grade 12. So if we look here, when I go control delete on my computer, I have the option to click on task manager. Processes is what we're concerned with, but these are some of the other things that the task manager is going to give you access to. Performance, app history, startup, users, details, services. We're only concerned with um, the processes. And if there's an app that's giving you an issue, you'd right click on it and then you click end task and the program would be closed. Single user versus multi-user operating systems. 
Most operating systems allow more than one person to log into a computer using different usernames or accounts. A single user operating system, that would be the normal op Windows operating system that would be installed on your home computer, allows you to switch between users and still remain logged on. But in reality, only one user is allowed to log on the computer at one time. Multi-user operating system, this would be the type of operating system used in networks, where single operating system deals with multiple users that simultaneously log on at the same time. Most multi-user operating systems are, offer special server editions that are installed on each computer in the network. Some examples include Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2012. So now we look at some of our utilities. We've got file management, scheduling, print manager, backup. Utilities are programs that perform system maintenance and administrative tasks. Several utilities are included for free with your operating system. File management. They provide us with a filing system and tools for managing our files, like using Explorer and Windows. It allows you to do some things like, yeah, yeah we've got Windows File Explorer. It provides us with a filing system and the tools for managing our files. So we can access different things on our computer. We can create folders, we can move files into folders, we can hide folders, we can unhide folders, we can make things read-only. Naming files. A file is named with the name of the file, dot the file extension. So the example, yeah, we've got a word doc, dot docx, tells us it's a word doc, and the file name is called cat syllabus. File extensions and file types. They identify the file type and is automatically added by program when you save. The file extension determines what program must be used to open the file. So this file would be opened because it's .docx using Microsoft Word. Naming files, a file path, a succession of folders that leads to the location of a specific file. So on my desktop, in a folder called cat notes, I have a subfolder called cat I don't have a subfolder, sorry. On the desktop, I have a folder called cat notes. Inside cat notes, I have a Word doc called cat syllabus. Here we've got an example. We've got the C drive. There's a folder called Windows. Inside that folder, there's a subfolder called System32. Inside System32, there's a file called System.ini. That's the file name and the file extension. System32 is a subfolder of Windows. Information about files, file properties. The basic information about a file, such as its name, size, date, modified. If the file is read only, when it was created, modified, accessed. What type of file it is, what program's gonna open. File attributes, a property of a file that can be set. It can be read, read only or hidden. If we go back here, sorry. Okay, so the file attributes, read-only or hidden. Read-only. A read-only file cannot be modified or saved under the same name within the same folder. Hidden. File attribute that indicates if a file is visible or not. Some files are hidden, so you cannot accidentally delete it. File metadata. Metadata is additional information stored about a file that describes the contents of the file, such as the file author, the title of the file, could be things like a uh, type of camera that took the image, um, the GPS locations of where the image was taken. Searching. You can search for a file based on any number of criteria, including the file size, the type of file, the date last modified. Compressing. The process of reducing the size of a file by producing a smaller compressed version of the file. That would be referred to as zipping. So, you want to email your friend a folder with a whole lot of files inside. You right click on that folder. You select send to compressed folder and it uh, zips that folder for you. And you can then attach that to an email. When the person receives the email with a zipped folder, you need to decompress it. That is the process of extracting the um, compressed folder and putting it back to the original size. So you'd right click on the folder once you've downloaded it, you would select extract and you'd choose a location to save it and it would um, decompress or extract your files. 
Scheduling. A scheduler is a program that is used to run certain programs at specific times. Like you can have backups run every night while you're sleeping. Reasons why schedulers are useful. They automatically check for updates. You don't have to remember to do them yourself. They set to automatically perform routine housekeeping tasks to make sure your device keeps working well. And it can be set to run during off-peak times, not during the time when you have to be using your device. And if your computer just had to start rebooting to install updates, it's going to actually interfere with your day. It's going to do it when you're not actually that busy and you're not possibly using your device. Print Manager. In most network environments, the user is able to print to more than one printer. When we print a document or any other type of file, it becomes a print job. These print jobs are temporarily sent to disk until the printer is available to print them. The process of sending print tasks to disk is known as spooling. Each printer has its own area on disk known as a printer queue, where the files containing the printing tasks are waiting in the queue to be printed. You can also pause them, cancel them, restart them. Backup. Backing up files has always been a crucial part of computer management. Why? Well, Files can accidentally be overwritten or deleted. Hardware failures such as a disk drive crashing. Hardware could be stolen. There could be disasters like fires, earthquakes, and floods, and they would destroy your hardware. Files can be corrupted by power fluctuations, especially in South Africa with things like load shedding. And they can be deleted or corrupted by viruses. In a network environment, it's important to have a formal structured backup policy in place. Most operating systems provide backup utilities. Other third-party vendors have specialized backup programs, and if you're working in a really big network, you probably are going to be using a third-party vendor um, application to run your backups. The programs have the following advantages. You can schedule when to backup files. You can choose whether to do a full backup or partial backup, and you can compress your backup so that you can save space on the disk. Security tools. It's necessary for the operating system itself to be adapted to include security measures and facilities to help control and prevent the spread of malware. We don't want viruses running our device or for someone to put ransomware and um, hold us ransom because we can't encrypt our data. For malware to work, it has to be installed on your computer. Access control means that the operating system specifically asks for your permission before any software can be installed on your computer. Access control makes it harder for malware to be installed without your knowledge. Firewall. This software acts as a barrier between your computer and the internet. It checks which programs are trying to access your computer via the internet or, accessing, or trying to access the internet from your computer. It consists of both hardware and software or a combination of both. For most people, the firewall provided by the operating system is sufficient for their needs. But in a networked environment, you're probably going to be using something a lot more sophisticated. Security, the Action Security Center in the Windows operating system warns you about settings that could make your system insecure. Antivirus. Now, um, Microsoft comes with, I think it's called Windows Defender, um, to run your antivirus and threat protection. And they have um, a firewall built in. But if you um, don't want to use their default program, you could buy something to, um, it will work with the system and it will tell you um, how your device is doing, scan things. Um, quarantine files that need to be quarantined or programs. So it can provide you with a single location where you can set and check the settings of your computer. So the firewall is the window automatic updates happening, is anti-malware settings on your software, on your computer. So factors influ influencing performance of your PC. Memory, a RAM, that can have a big uh, effect on the performance of your computer, the central processing unit, a hard disk drive, and a solid state drive, and the influence of malware. The three factors, the most crucial, that are going to affect performance, and if you're buying a PC, this is what you want to consider, is going to be the memory of the device, your RAM, the processing of CPU, 
and storage, which will either be a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. So RAM, any program and data needs to be processed or run. It has to be loaded from the disk into RAM. If your memory is full, parts of the program that the computer is not currently busy with are stored in an area on the hard drive. Here I've got an example of some RAM slots being put into the motherboard. Yeah, some RGB RAM. These have to be loaded back into memory again when they are needed. That will slow down the computer. The more applications and programs are running, the slower the computer. The more RAM you have, the faster the computer. So you want 8 gigs or 16 gigs. Caching. Web pages that have recently been accessed are stored locally on the hard drive, so they are retrieved more quickly the next time they are accessed. This is known as web caching. Special high-speed memory called cache memory helps improve the overall performance of the computer. What is a CPU? <laughs> so inside your computer on the motherboard, you've got your chip, what a CPU looks like and where it's located so on the motherboard, underneath your heatsink, you've got CPU cores, you've got a CPU clock speed, and what type of CPU is it? i3, i5, i7, um, you also get um, Ryzen ones. So speed. The CPU speed is measured in gigahertz, GHZ. Number of cores is a dual core, quad core, octa core. This will refer to the number of physical processes included in a single chip. Each core is independent of any other core on the CPU chip. Yeah, we've got the fan and heatsink on top of our CPU. That's what your CPU is looking like. It's going on to the motherboard. Cache size. The larger the cache memory on the CPU, the faster it's likely to perform as it can store and retrieve more data on the cache memory, which is much faster than ordinary memory. A hard disk drive. This is the permanent home for all your data and programs. Anything that needs to be processed needs to be loaded from disk into memory. It's important to have a fast hard drive as it will improve the performance of the computer system. Yeah, we're comparing a hard disk drive to a solid state drive. And obviously, a solid state drive is super fast, okay? Much faster than a hard disk drive. So if you have the option, have a solid state drive fitted. Um, in desktop PCs, you can in fact have both. One for just storing files and one for things like running your um, operating system and things from. This is mechanical. So if you drop this, it's not going to work. This is electronic. When the hard drive is fragmented, the files will take longer to retrieve. A disk defragmentation utility can be used to rearrange the files so that all the scattered parts of the files are put back into whole chunks on your computer's hard disk. Yeah, as our solid state drive. Stores data electronically. They are quite expensive, but they give us really fast data transfer feeds. Most new laptops and desktop PCs come with the operating system loaded on the solid state drive. This ensures the PC can boot up really fast. Solid state drives can get fragmented, but because they are electronic rather than magnetic, fragmentation has virtually no effect on their speed. Influence of malware. Malware can slow down your computer by using precious resources such as free memory and hard drive space. Spyware can slow down your internet connection if it frequently connects to the internet. Your computer can also get turned into what is known as a zombie and be used to attack other machines by spreading malware to them. Last section, disk scanning, disk defragmentation, and disk your disk filling up. Disk scanning, this is a utility that comes included with all operating systems. It's used to check a drive for errors and bad sectors and try and fix them. It can also be used on a flash drive to fix problems. Scan a drive, right click on the drive, select properties and select the tools tab. Okay, so properties, tools tab. Disk defragmentation. The more you use your computer, the more the files will get scattered on the disk. The more scattered the files, the slower your computer comes. That's what is known as disk defragmentation. The disk defragmenter is a tool that reorganizes parts of files and speeds up your computer again. Here's an example. Disk cleanup. 
With the increasing use of media files such as photos, music, movies, most people find themselves running out of storage space sooner or later, particularly if you have uh, an uh, iPhone. <laughs> There's um, Most people don't have a lot of storage space and um, with an iPhone you can't even add SD card in. Um, people with Android could do that, um, but also on your computer you can find yourself running out of space quite quickly. Windows provides a very useful utility named as Disk Cleanup Wizard, which can make storage space available by removing temporary files downloaded from the internet or temporary files created by Windows.